the 50 most memorable cards in FIFA Ultimate Team history. I tried my best to make a list of the 50 most memorable Ultimate Team cards. This list was extremely hard to make. I had a short list of over 100 plus cards to try and choose from. So if you're thinking of a card that did not make this list, put it in the comments down below because there are definitely cards that deserve to be in a list like this that just didn't quite make the cut. And there's probably some that I just left out. So I'm picking players starting at about the YouTube era, quote unquote, FIFA 14 to FIFA 23. I did not put any FIFA 23 players in because of obvious reasons, right? I know the YouTube era started kind of before that, but at the same time, I didn't play really before then. I don't want to put in S-Wine, Silver El Shirawi, and those kind of guys. I didn't really get to use them. So I don't want to put them in here and talk out of my ass about the players, right? I want to talk about guys that I'm very familiar with. There are so many cards to choose from. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. It took me a long time to make, but let's just get right into it. So first off, we have a couple honorable mentions, actually. The first one is the Hero Elio Castro card that Castro Castro, the streamer, did receive after his charity stream during FIFA 15. A rare EAW here, they gifted him this card that was cracked out in stats. It really was a huge moment in the community at the time. I'd like to shout out that Castro card, and then also Alex Hunter. Remember him from FIFA 17? Wanted to give him a little shout out too. So guys, this 1 through 50 is not in any particular order. It is just the 50 most memorable cards, in my opinion, of FIFA Ultimate Team, apart from number one, which is my number one all-time FIFA card. So let's begin at number 50. It is Inform Yassine Shikawi from FIFA 15. This guy was a five-star skills, five-star weak foot beast, six foot two. He's one of the only players in FIFA 15 with five-star skills and five-star weak foot. Unfortunately, he was out of FIFA very quickly after this. I don't even know if he had another FIFA card, honestly. This card was amazing. If you played FIFA 15, you know how good this card was. At number 49, we have FIFA 21 Future Stars SBC Curtis Jones, the center mid version. This card was ridiculous. He ended up getting a Fuddies card later in the year because he was so overpowered in this game. This card was amazing. He was gigantic in the midfield. Everything was intercepted. He was like a cheap Vieira out there. Call it gang and stats. If you never got the chance to play against this Curtis Jones card, consider yourself lucky. At number 48, we have team of the season Miguel Layun from FIFA 16. This card was a Chemgate legend. This was the time when Chemgate was a thing. Cards were basically playing on zero chemistry everywhere. So people were using Layun in their teams, even though they did not link to anybody. Crazy stats. Unfortunately, we don't really have Lyun cards in FIFA anymore, but we can't forget this legend. At number 47, Showdown Winners Kleber SBC. This might be one of the best right backs or most underrated right backs in FIFA history. You could not get past this card. This was a center back at right back. I never completed him, and honestly, it's probably one of the most I've ever regretted not completing an SBC in my life was going up against Kleber every other game against rank one players. At number 46, we have Team of the Season Albamiang from FIFA 15. This is one of the first cards ever with, I think, base 99 pace. There's a lot of Aubameyang cards you can put in this list. This is the one that I thought is probably the most memorable because of the fact it was so rare at the time for a card to have 99 pace. He fit the pace meta FIFA 15 perfectly. FIFA 16, he also had an incredible team of the season card then too. So you can kind of put either one in here. At number 45, Gold Biabiani. This is one that people might have forgotten about a little bit. But once you think of him again, you realize, oh my goodness, Biabiani was unstoppable in FIFA 15. That pace meta was insane. 60 something shooting. It did not matter. He was ridiculous. The French links, of course, as well, which just makes cards even rattier. Bia Biani was a pace merchant. Number 44, Ramirez, another pace merchant as well. I chose his FIFA 14 card. You can choose his FIFA 15 card if you wanted to. I think FIFA 16 too. He even had a really nice card. Ramirez felt like putting a striker in your midfield with 99 pace is what it felt like. He was basically N'Golo Kante before N'Golo Kante, which is high, high praise and it's well deserved. The card was ridiculous. Number 43, FIFA 17, Inform Musa. Musa's had a lot of great cards over the years. I chose his FIFA 17 version because this is the one where he was in the Premier League with Leicester City. He's got a FIFA 16 Inform that was crazy. FIFA 18 Inform, FIFA 19 Inform that was crazy. Some funnies cards as well. Musa is really a FIFA legend. This card was sick. A rat ahead of his time, definitely worthy of being on the list. Number 42, Scream Emre Moore, the bronze card from Dortmund. This card would not feel like a bronze at all. This was getting towards one of the last years you could actually use a bronze or silver card in FIFA and still be somewhat okay. This 
bronze emery more card was like well over 100,000 coins for a long time, which is crazy to think about a bronze card in FIFA being over 100k. This card was very, very good. He has 50 passing. You might say that looks horrible. But honestly, back then, it wasn't quite as bad as today. Number 41, some might say this might be a little too low on the list. He could honestly be a lot higher on this list if I was doing it in exact order. But FIFA 14, Miroslav Klose. If you don't know, the meta in FIFA 14 was basically run down the line, cross the ball to your six foot two, six foot three striker. This Klose card was honestly one of the most broken cards in FIFA history. He headed everything. He was literally the perfect meta card. If you've never had to play against this Miroslav Klose card, you don't know what it's like to concede three goals while doing nothing wrong. They just cross the ball. Doesn't matter how tall your center backs are, you are losing the header to Klose, and it was insane. Number 40, FIFA 15, silver team of the season, Paulo Dybala. This is one of the first Paulo Dybala cards in general, and it's honestly probably the most memorable Dybala card because it was a silver. It obviously played like a 90 plus team of the season card card. It was hundreds of thousands of coins in the market. You had to snipe him for a while at like 450k, I want to say it was. This is one of the most memorable silver cards of all time, in my opinion. Number 39, going a little bit more recently here, just last year, and that's Flashback Benzema from FIFA 22. I think this might be one of the most used cards in FIFA history, because when this Flashback SBC came out, I want to say 75% of your weekend league games, Flashback Benzema was in it, because he came out, he was very, very cheap to craft. He was insanely good. He had all the Benzema animations with some flashback cards like don't get their player animations this benzema was basically just a better benzema card unreal flashback honestly one of the most used fifa cards ever number 38 you can probably put a lot of this guy's cards on this list but i'll put fifa 20 gold mendy because this is kind of the start of the gold mendy being one of the best left backs in fifa trend that we're still seeing to this day gold mendy is ridiculous somehow it must be a body type thing or something but yeah gold mendy you can use him all year right now you can put gold mendy in your team and would he be that much worse than a team of the season card? Not really. Number 37, Silver Cristiano from the J League in FIFA 17. He was one of the last Silvers to really be expensive. He was like 70k at one point extinct because of his high physicals, high pace, of course. He had a League SBC card as well that I think was very good, but that Silver card just has something to it. Back when Silvers were usable, really, they're just not anymore, and it's kind of sad because legends like Cristiano and other guys that are going to be on this list later are just not possible anymore, right? Number 36, one of the the best icons that we no longer have in FIFA, and that is George Weah. I picked his FIFA 16 version. He was one of the best icon strikers from the United States. Made our country proud. I didn't put too many icons on this list because of the fact that it's a little kind of, it's kind of a cop-out. I wanted to put more original players on this list, but George Weah not being in FIFA and hasn't been for a really long time. I think he deserves to be on this list. Number 35, Gold Obafemi Martins from FIFA 15 I picked. I think he has other gold cards you could pick here as well. I think he had a Fuddies card as well that was insane. Gold Obafemi Femi Martins fit this pace meta so well. That shooting was a complete lie. He was a great shooter. The MLS squads of FIFA 15 were insane. Him and Emanike up top, who just missed this list, by the way. Whichever one you thought was more overpowered, you can put here in this spot. But those MLS squads were sick. And that kind of transitions into number 34, and that's Marvell Wynn, the, the bronze or silver center back, depending on what year of FIFA you're talking about. I put his FIFA 15 card, 90 plus pace. That defending was a complete lie. Once again, all that mattered really was pace in FIFA at the time, and this Marvel win card was genuinely insane. Division 1 players rolling up with a bronze center back, and he was like, shit, I can't pass up. Him, DeAndre Yedlin in your back line, bronze and silvers, they were ridiculous. So Marvel win definitely deserves a spot on this list. Number 33 is the legend himself, that is C-Loss. FIFA 21 was where he kind of started to explode because of the Danny Aarons meme, of course. He honestly was a crazy good card. He's very memorable because of, obviously, all the things that surround C-Loss. Definitely deserves to be on the list. List. His inform is team of the season, all great cards and a lot of fun to use. Number 32, one that's also a little more recent, that's Hero Ginola. Now, why he's so memorable is I don't think people quite understand how good this card was. FIFA 22 Ginola, when Jam was a little more prevalent, right? It's a little bit better now with the bounce packs. It's still not good. But last year, especially, you could just kind of run straight through somebody and just score. And Ginola, for the first three months of the game, there was nobody better than that. If you had Ginola in your team, your team got so much better compared to any other card you could have put in there. To have a Ginola in FIFA 22, the origin of Ginola in FIFA, I think it 
deserves to be on the list, personally. Number 31, Fuddy's Bale. FIFA 15, this is an iconic card. Gareth Bale had some insane FIFA cards over the years. I just picked his FIFA 15 Fuddy's card. The Penta is famous for using him as a CDM. Uh, let's not forget that. His outside foot shots were insane. FIFA 15 had long shot meta. Outside foot shots were ridiculous. It's sad that no more Gareth Bale cards are going to be in FIFA. Unless, of course, you know, EAFC can whip up some hero slash icon stuff. But we'll have to wait and see. Number 30, second player of the month, Hyungmin Sun, FIFA 17. Very specific card, so you might say, you know, it's kind of random to put in here. But if you didn't play FIFA 17, you don't understand it's similar to the flashback of Benzema. Everybody had this card. He was priced so cheap. He was so insane to FIFA 17. It was kind of the breakout Hyungmin Sun year. People kind of forget it a little bit because there's been so many Hyungmin Sun cards in FIFA. That second player of the month, Sun, was ridiculous. Number 29, record breaker Wayne Rooney, FIFA 15. This is another classic card, too. Wayne Rooney, probably one of his last elite cards in FIFA. He he had the pace, he had the physical, like this card was honestly juice for his time. And his long shots in that long shot meta were some of the best in the game. That card is super memorable to me when I think of FIFA 15. Number 28, Gold Samuel Eto from FIFA 14. This is one that is near and dear to me. It's one of my first FIFA cards that I ever used. And this card was nuts. A Chelsea FIFA 14 Eto card. Unfortunately, he had a huge downgrade the next year, so he wasn't very usable. It's kind of like the last Eto card that was usable. Now, of course, he has a great eye icon card. But let's not forget FIFA 14 Gold Eto. Incredible card. Number 27, FIFA 20 Gold Militao. Yeah, there's a lot of cards you can put for Eder Militao on this list, but I picked the first one, similar to kind of like the Gold Mendy thing, where Gold Militao has been a staple in FIFA for a long time, and he's just insane. But this Gold Militao in FIFA 20, you could use him all year. If it was July and you went up against Gold Militao, it was no different than a team of the season Van Dyke. Am I gassing it a little bit? Possibly, but the point is Eder Militao was an insane card. Number 26, FIFA FIFA 19 Player of the Month, Lucas Mora. This is also one of the most used cards in FIFA history. I think this is like the second or third most upvoted card on FIFA 19. And it's because it came out, it was so cheap to do. It was very ahead of the power curve. So Lucas Mora, people use this card for months after he came out. I think Lucas Mora deserves a card on this list. Honestly, I think he's been very underrated in FIFA over the years. He's had so many great cards. And this is just one that I think everybody can remember. Number 25, Record Breaker, Jamie Vardy from FIFA 16. This card is legendary. It was so good. It was like 600,000 coins when it came out. It was so expensive. The Leicester City hype on FIFA 16 was so crazy because there were no good Vardy cards, no good Mares cards, no good Conte cards. So every good card that came out from Leicester City, it was so expensive. And this Vardy card was very, very, very good. It has a team of the season card also here, but it just didn't quite hit the same as this record breaker. And this card during the Leicester run, I think it's just more memorable than his team of the season card. Number 24, it is Gold Mbappe FIFA 18. I wanted to pick a Gold Mbappe card because obviously he's been one of the most ridiculous cards in FIFA for the last five, six years. But I picked this one because this is the one where he really burst on the scene. FIFA 18, this card was super overpowered as a gold card. His very first PSG card. But if you want to put his FIFA 19 card in here, it was the first one to have five-star skill moves. I would not blame you at all if you want to put that one in here. Killian Mbappe gold card. I mean, what more can you really say? Number 23 is Team of the Year, Aryan Robin from FIFA 15. When I was recording this video, I just somehow totally skipped over it. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, he's in this video. Definitely deserves it. He's one of my favorite cards ever. Number 22, Gold Naldo from FIFA 16. He has a team of the season card as well. Naldo for a few years was honestly incredible in FIFA. He had crazy long shots and free kicks, by the way. Super underrated part of Naldo. He's a center back. Gold, he's a gold center back FIFA legend. That's what Naldo is. Number 21, team of the season Hulk FIFA 14. You can put some other team of the season cards in here as well from Hulk, but I feel like a Hulk card has to be in this list. He had a rare combo of pace and physical, which you didn't really see too much back in the day, especially with the dribbling also. The long shots, I mean, what more can you say? Imagine a Hulk power shot now. I mean, if we somehow got like a hero Hulk card, that would just be insane. I don't even know if he's deserving of a hero card, but Hulk would be so good in FIFA. I'd love to see him again. Number 20, Fuddy's Yaya Toure from FIFA 15. Yaya Toure's cards in FIFA, for whatever reason, are ridiculous. And that's even including the one that came out this year. I mean, his stats don't look insane on that base hero card, but as you guys know, this Yaya Toure, when the game came out, 
was one of the best players in FIFA. This funny is Yaya Toure was also one of the best players in FIFA 15. An insane midfielder. He could do everything. At the pace, strength, the dribbling, I mean, the whole combination. He was incredible. Number 19, it's FIFA 14 Pele. The reason Pele is on this list is because this card just straight up didn't exist for like two months. Nobody ever saw it. It's probably the rarest card in the game that was just like released into the game, not counting like mistakes or cards released to one set person. This is just a card that was released to everybody. You could pack him, but no one ever saw him. And apparently one day, all of a sudden, there were like six on the market out of nowhere. EA said they didn't release them themselves. That seemed a little fishy to the rest of the FIFA community, but this card was basically extinct for two months. Nobody ever saw it. Finally, some supply hit because EA decided to add some. You know, where have we seen that before? Apparently, it never exists, but um, that's a story for another day. Number 18 is Gold Eric Bai. His FIFA 17 card, um... Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. This is probably one of the best center backs in FIFA history. No joke. He played FIFA 17, Eric Bailly, and uh, one more person that's still yet to come on this list. For center backs you could use in July and still be better than like everybody else. I mean, it made no sense. It goes to show you that at the core of FIFA, body type probably means more than anything else. Because what's the other explanation for cards like this being so insane, right? Get a Fuddy's nominee card as well because he was just so insane. Number 17, FIFA 19 flashback David Luiz. This is an incredible card. Probably the last great David Luiz card. If you had the privilege of completing this, this honestly it was one of the best defenders slash CDMs that I can remember. Honestly, he fit the FIFA 19 meta perfectly because his afro adds four inches to his height and everything in that game was a header at the back post by an El Tornado cross. Yes, that was a real meta we played. Also, first time spinning, swirling, turning around shots. If you've not seen FIFA 19 gameplay, go treat yourself. It was a joy. Number 16, this was a very difficult choice because he's had so many great cards over the years and that is Neymar. But I had to pick his FIFA 18 card with the legendary dynamic image of him holding the player of the season. This is probably one of the best cards in FIFA history. I'm going to be honest. He fit the FIFA 18 meta perfectly. Five star, five star. There's nothing wrong with this card. He got up to 82 physical. I mean, I'm so sorry if you never got to use it. You felt like you were on crack when you used this Neymar card. I think this is honestly one of the best cards ever. Kicking off our top 15, it wouldn't be a FIFA list without FIFA 20 Europa League Ryan Kent SBC. This was probably one of, once again, the most used cards in FIFA history. This was the year of the drag back, the five star weak foot, and Ryan Kent could do both at an absurd level. This was like a pro player card that just came out out of nowhere. This is like a legendary FIFA 20 card, honestly. We've never quite had a Kent card this good since, but um, honestly, that might not be a bad thing. This thing was broken. Number 14, Gold Renato Sanchez FIFA 17. This might be one of the best gold midfielders of all time, honestly. This card felt like a team of the season card that you use in October. Honestly, I've never played with a card like this. It was 78 rated all year. He never got a better card the entire year, and it didn't matter. Everyone still remembers Renato Sanchez being insane. He's obviously been insane ever since, for whatever reason. But this was the Genesis, and unbelievable player. Number 13, got another gold player here, and that's gold Anthony Martial from FIFA 18. This, I think, might have been peak Anthony Martial in FIFA. Unbelievable card. There were teams in June with all TOTS players pretty much everywhere. It's a lot of the gold Martial left mid. He got a funnies card because he was so insane this year. I mean, this was peak Martial in FIFA. Number 12, this card was in my number one discussion, but I decided to pick somebody else, and that is FIFA 19's Zlatan Ibrahimovic flashback card. Perfect card. Fit the meta exactly had the five star skills had enough agility to do those insane spin shots that were somehow meta in that game could do the El Tornado crosses could score the El Tornado crosses literally the exact card for the meta and he was an SPC only hard part was linking him but honestly so fun to use and a perfect card for the game number 11 a Ronaldo card had to be on here somewhere and it was so hard to pick one that was I thought maybe the most memorable I decided to pick the FIFA 19 team of the year card and the reason being is because I think this might be peak Ronaldo in FIFA. I think he fit the meta so incredibly well with the headers. He jumped higher than anybody else. He was the best card in the game. He was the most expensive card in the game the entire year. Until his team of the season came out, there was no better card than that FIFA. I think this is Cristiano at the peak of his powers until, of course, he gets an icon card, which, which prime Ronaldo icon card could bring a grown man to tears, but I think this is peak of his powers, Ronaldo in FIFA. Number 10, goals are on. Um, do I really need to say any more than that? Number 9, this was so tough to choose which card hard to pick for this player, but I went with the first inform Roman Alessandrini from FIFA 18. This was the sweatiest card, I think, 
for a period of time in FIFA 18. I think every time you saw Alessandrini and the other team, you knew the other player was good and you were in for a battle. He had a foot miss card in this game. He had two other informs and a Fuddies card. And that Fuddies card was probably the best card in, in the game for a little while. Alessandrini is a FIFA legend. He had a flashback card and I think FIFA 21, I want to say, that was very good. He's had so many great cards in FIFA, but FIFA 18 was peak Alessandrini. Number eight, we are getting down slowly to the end. We've got Luis Suarez, team of the year. I think people sometimes forget how good this team of the year Luis Suarez was. He's, to me, one of the most memorable FIFA 17 cards. I think he's probably one of my top three I remember the most in FIFA 17. He was probably the one of the best shooters I've ever used in FIFA. Everything went in. If you had the Suarez card, I was horrified to play against you. I could not stand playing against Luis Suarez. I think this is peak Suarez. I wish more people got to experience peak Suarez in FIFA because it was ridiculous. Number seven, you absolutely cannot have a FIFA list of the most memorable cards ever without having a Raja Nangle and Team of the Season card. I played this FIFA 17 Tots card. It was all 90s. And I think this is, might be one of the first cards ever to be all 90s. You put Raja Nangle in your midfield. That man was playing for the badge. There was no stopping him. He was running everywhere with the high, high work rates. Long shots insane. Passing insane. Interceptions ridiculous. He was the, one of the fastest players in the midfield in the game. There was no flaws to him. And he's such a FIFA legend. I wish we got a Nangle and card that is this good. Hopefully we do sometime this summer. Number six, just missing out on the top five. It's Conte. I picked Gold Conte FIFA 17. This was the year after Leicester won the league. His first Chelsea card, he went up to an 81 rated. Then the winter upgrade got him to an 83 rated card. And for whatever reason, this was the beginning of N'Golo Conte being the best DM in the game. There was a stretch for about four years where Gold Conte was as good as Vieira in FIFA. It just, it was insane. I've never seen a player play more like his real life self in FIFA. He ran everywhere. He intercepted everything. I don't know what animations they coded in this guy. Let's not forget his player of the season card this year as well. The purple card of him holding the trophy. An insane card, dude. Vangolo Conte truly is kind of done at the top level. He is so deserving of an icon card. I don't get the people who say he's a hero. I just can't understand it. He's one of the best midfielders of the 2010s. And he only was a star in half of them. I'm genuinely, it might be a hot take, but I genuinely believe so. Number five, this one's held near and dear to my heart. It's team of the year, Paul Pogba, FIFA 16. If you got to use this card, uh, he was the best midfielder in the game. It wasn't even close in my opinion. There's a couple really memorable Pogba cards you can pick here. There's a summer heat card in FIFA 20, I think, with Man United. He was incredible there as well. You can pick that one. But FIFA 16, Pogba, different breed. I mean, the long shots were insane. This wasn't even like a huge long shot game, if I remember right. But his long shots, insane. Physicality, dominant. One of my favorite cards ever, and he deserves to be in my top five. Number four, the rat leader. I mean, he's got to be on this list, right? And very high up. It's Ben Yedder, FIFA 20. Drag back merchant, five-star weak foot merchant. Him and Kent, nightmare to play against FIFA 20. There's other Ben Yedder cards you can put here, but I mean, in my opinion, I think FIFA 20 Ben Yedder was the start to the rat that we know right now. And just looking at him brings back memories of the drag back meta, and I already want to move on to the next player. So let's do that. Into the top three. Now, I kind of picked the top three as like my top three, right? And <laughs> this player literally was better than Team of the Season cards. Team of the Year cards. I can't just it. FIFA 17, Chris Smalling. This was my first year of like really trying to grind weekend league where I try to get better at FIFA. And if I didn't use Smalling on my team, I was like, what's wrong with my defense? I couldn't defend all of a sudden. You'd think I'd upgrade when I go to a team of the season card with like 88 pace or something crazy like that. I put gold Smalling back in all of a sudden, my defense is a rock again. I, I couldn't just couldn't explain it. Everybody had that same experience with Chris Smalling. Probably one of the best center backs in FIFA history. He's in my top three. Number two, if you've noticed, I have not put a Lionel Messi card in this yet, but this card brings back so many memories. It's so rare. The hype in the YouTube scene for this card was crazy. It's record breaker Messi FIFA 15. This was like the one of the rarest cards ever. I remember when Anison Gibb packed this card and like the FIFA Twitter scene, FIFA community was so like in shock that anybody packed him. I did luckily get to use him later in the year insane card. He fit the meta FIFA 15 very well. It's so tough to pick one messy card that's the most memorable, but this is the one to me that I remember the most. Now we have arrived at number one. Number one actually isn't just one player. And it's not just two players. It's three players. Some of you may have been wondering where these names have been on this list, and it is the sweaty FIFA 15 trio. Sadu Dumbia, 
Victory Barbo, and Gervinho. They all played for the same club at the same time and were three of the most broken attackers in the game. This might be the most iconic FIFA trio of attackers ever. The pace and physicality on all three of these cards just made them insane. Once again, it was had to be just a body type thing looking back at it. If you never got to play with them, you can't really fully grasp what it was like. But these three, especially Sadu Dumbia, honestly, some of the best cards in the entire game. And I'm not even exaggerating. If you played FIFA 15, you know what I'm talking about. About. Because obviously there's so many FIFA cards that are memorable that I did not say in this video. If you want me to make another one, there's plenty more for another one. If you want to make another one regarding most underrated, most forgotten FIFA cards ever, there's definitely other videos out there to make. So if you enjoyed this video, ignore the voice crack, please drop a like. I love you all. See you next video very, very soon. Peace.